So hello and thank you for clicking the link and coming through to see our contextual video for our online exhibition documenting a pandemic uh, by Gypsy Ray. Um, Gypsy Ray, um, sadly, who passed away in 2020, was a documentary photographer and lived her early life in the United States, a native of Illinois, and from the year 2000 was based in Kilkenny. She has an, a, a huge portfolio of work, extensive, but for the purposes of today's contextual video, we want to particularly focus on the work that was created in the 1980s and 1990s for people who had AIDS or HIV. And this work is very important in her, in her career and really not much of it has been seen in Ireland previously before. Um, very important from the point of view of the humanity and the trust that she built up with the sitters in the photographs, something that you see in the exhibition itself. And even more important are the testimonies, the personal testimonies that she added to this work and that the, the sitters left with her to accompany the photographs, extremely moving and poignant. And on the basis of this, to add this personal context, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined today and, and honored really to be joined by Professor Carter Wilson. Um, Professor Wilson was a close friend, um, a lifetime friend really in many respects with Gypsy Ray and actually wrote the introduction for the original exhibition of these photographs in 1986. So, so a very special thing. Um, Carter himself was Professor of Community Studies at the University of California, Santa Cruz. He is a writer, a novelist, anthropologist, and famously wrote the narration for the um, Academy Award winning uh, The Times of Harvey Milk, um, a very important um, piece of work and, and that went on to influence later pieces around Harvey Milk, uh, particularly the Gus Van Sant movie um, from 2008. So Carter, thank you very much for joining me today um, for this, this very informal um, a series of questions and, and answers with you. And I suppose to, to, to begin, if you could say a little bit how you came to know Gypsy Ray and this period of work in, in San Francisco and how you came to write the introduction for this exhibition. I was 35 years of age when I came out of the closet and I came out of the closet because I fell in love with an American Chicano fellow and we fell in together and then that was just our reality. So I suddenly had to announce to the world. And he was friends with a woman, a wonderful photographer named Helen Wallace, who lived here in Santa Cruz, California. And Helen was already bosom buddies with a young lady named Gypsy Ray. Anyway, so I met Gypsy uh, when I, in about 1977 or 78. And then we always hung out and Helen Wallace gave us a Christmas present, which was a photo session, a portrait session with, with Ray, my partner at the time. And, and uh, she took a series of photographs of us and then we were always around each other. And, those, and I, had, I, had, I had a very good idea, I've got to admit, I don't have many good ideas, but I had a very good idea, which was I had a course in the subject of uh, politics and art. And I would have Gypsy come in to class because she had an attitude that you didn't actually see as much in photographers and particularly in undergraduate photographers. And Gypsy would, for example, and she was always, she had this lovely personality. So she contacts, she made direct contact with people almost immediately. And, and, and her point of view was that she made a photograph, not that she shot a photograph or that she took a photograph or that she stole a photograph. And what I'm getting at is, uh, I knew very early on that Gypsy was a master of portrait photography. And then, do you want me to just go on and narrate a little bit or shall I? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's particularly, it's, oh, it's, kind of, it's very interesting to hear what, what you, you know, that connection you had to her at that time that she came to work with you at the university. And, the, and the, the, student, the, students, the students loved hearing that from her and they saw her own authenticity, I believe. But what I'm getting at is that Gypsy had, by then concentrated in portrait photography and also in, uh, I, in uh, when she was in graduate school, she had really made, made a, a master's thesis on the male nude. And if you think about it in the, in the 1970s, which was supposed to be wide open city here in the United States, you know, she and the other women, other women who had photographed men naked 
were criticized in the press because apparently it seemed that the male gaze on the female body was okay, but it was somehow wrong for women to have the gaze on the men without their clothes on, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is all preliminary to saying that she was beautifully prepared for this idea that she had. Mm -hmm. And the idea that she had was, we were in a terrible fix. I mean, I mean, particularly the gay community. By the middle 1980s, people were dying around us left and right. I mean, you didn't know which of your friends might die next. You had clothes in the closet for going to funerals. It was really awful. And one of the most awful parts of it was the stigma attached to it. Mm -hmm. Even in the gay world, if you start talking about AIDS in a bar that people didn't want to talk with you, you know, and then old Gypsy comes along, a straight woman with a kind of a, a, a good feeling about her gay friends, and she develops this idea to photograph people with AIDS and their caretakers together mm -hmm. uh, in order, and you know, I, I can't, I'm not, it's not mine really to say exactly what her purpose was, but it was clear to me that what she meant to do was put an entirely different and sympathetic uh, cast on people who were sick and many of them and dying actually and 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 to put a positive cast also on the people who dared to take care of them and to come in and all of the social workers and nurses and so forth yeah. and I, so 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 in other words that project of hers was a brilliant idea from the beginning she executed it brilliantly and it was also very very important uh, because it helped, uh, it helped make some of those bridges that um, that were necessary to keep to keep the gay community in the larger community. I, I think really was what was going on there. No, I'm sorry, I've talked too much. No, that's that's exactly why we're chatting today. It's kind of you, you were there with with Gypsy at the time. You you knew what was happening in at, at the, in the heat of the moment at that time in the mid to, to late 80s, 90s, and. And you know, you touched on something important there when you mentioned the the the, the healthcare staff and the, the workers, because of course it, it it it's very hard to disconnect what we're going through today, a different type of pandemic of sorts. And I I, I picked out a quotation from one of the testimonies of one of the doctors in Gypsy's photographs, and uh, a doctor left, and he stated, I'll just read it here, contemplating these times when a sub microscopic organism has humbled our universe. And I find it very hard to disconnect from what we've been going through today to what Gypsy has documented in those photographs 35 years ago. But I suppose my question to, to you would be, is there similarities between what Gypsy has captured, what you lived through in those times, and what, what we've gone through for the past 16 months? Or is, is, is it fair to draw such comparisons and contrasts between? I've actually felt all along that the comparison was direct. And uh, when the United States government under President Trump began to stumble, you know, Trump said it was going to be a miracle and it was going to go away tomorrow or something. Uh, uh, if you've been through one pandemic, then in a sense, you kind of know what the, what the rights and wrongs and some of the pacing is going to be in another one. And it felt, it felt very, very strange in that way to me for us to have this other one, which, which affected the whole society and which did not seem to be concentrated on a stigmatized group. So that was, that's a great difference really. But I'll tell you a, a real similarity. In this country right at the moment, we are working to try to get more people vaccinated. And the way the national mainstream media are doing that is on the regular news, they'll put on little clips of, for example, a teenage girl who after a year still has symptoms and who uh, uh, has not really fully recovered. And what she tells directly to the camera is, uh, get yourself vaccinated. Well, the connection here is that in the photographs, in the statements and in the photographs, you see that these guys have figured out that they are going to die, but that, um, that uh, they had, do have a message to the world. And it's a message that, that in some sense, it, it, it's about a message about their own bodies and their own bodies as a kind of witness mm -hmm. and bearing witness. And this is what Gypsy captured. So anyway, my answer, my, my, my direct answer to your question is it is a very similar situation. The, the extent of it 
uh, is much larger in the last 16 months. The whole, there was never, uh, there was never a lockdown period during the, the AIDS epidemic, uh, but certainly the kind of the sense of, 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 of loyalty and the importance of the caregivers, you know, that also is featured, but here in the mainstream media in those days, it was really, it was Gypsy and a few others who were trying to put, and then they started talking about putting a human face on AIDS. Well, she was like the pioneer of that, as far as I can see. Yeah, and, and, and it is interesting in looking through those photographs, you know, that, that she captured. It's, it's, she's in the room completely, but yet allows the emotions to come through in all the different faces. And, you know, I think it's important what you said, like ACT UP was very active at that stage, fighting on the streets for, for, for LGBT rights. Um, and could you say a little bit about that, the activism of the time? Because I'm very conscious that in some of the photographs that it's key that some of the people she photographed were involved in those movements to, to gain those rights. There's a very moving photograph of a fellow, he's sitting there, he's looking a little bit to the side and he said, he's chained himself, I believe, to the front doors of City Hall in San Francisco and has been sleeping out on the street. I, he says he's been out there something like a hundred days. Now this is a person who is not feeling well, mm. but that's that same thing I was mentioning before, which is people began to realize that their job now was to testify with themselves um, in order to try to bring the larger world to understand what was going on for them and what might happen to them too, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this show initially in 1986, if you think about it, ACT UP begins just about then, American ACT UP begins just about then, and, uh, and the activism, and the, 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 the questioning of Dr. Fauci in, the, in Washington, and, and people lying down in the street and, and pretending that they're dead, you know, it was a very, it was a very, very active moment. And this show comes right, right before that. So you can see that in these guys and in what they have to say and in what their caretakers have to say. Mm -hmm. um, uh, caregivers have to say that this is uh, that, that, that we, we're actually moving from a period of kind of desolation and um, and craziness about what to do into a period of, of trying to connect sometimes in very in very abrasive ways mm -hmm. with uh, with the with the larger world which has got this at some time uh, help out that was I think was what what was going on then. You're absolutely right about this is the tips this show this this these photographs come from the the kind of the nut or the kernel moment in that period of activism. Yeah. And even though it's on the other side of the world, you know, on the east coast of the US, exactly the same scenarios are being played out here in in, in Ireland and in the UK. Um, you, you have this it's it's a common human thread that that binds all these individuals. Um, together. And, and I think that that's quite interesting. I noticed in the introduction that you wrote for Gypsy for the, for the first incarnation of this show, you talk about that actually all it comes down to at the end of the day is the need for love and caring. And I suppose in the photographs, she captured that. She captured that these are people's brothers, they're people's husbands, they're people's, you know, sisters. Um, it, it's, it's that commonality of humanity that you write about in the chief photograph. You know, in that in that period, it was very shocking. You know, here I am, a university professor, and this and that, and I own a house, and I think I'm in the solid middle class. And then you discover that uh, people with AIDS are being described as oh, 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 they're talking about about innocent people who get AIDS, and the implication there is that all gay people are guilty because of their sexual lives. And it it's a big shock to realize that you are not part of that. In many people's minds, you are not part of the central issues or the sort of normal society. And, and, and so this work was, as I, it was the same thing, as I said before, and you've said it too, it's a, a, a work of a kind of attachment performed by a straight woman of, of enormous, enormous kind of empathy and ability to, uh, I have to emphasize that about Gypsy. Uh, nobody did, <laughs> We have a we have a slogan about a pastry thing here called uh, as it goes uh, nobody everybody doesn't like something nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee which is the name of the, of the product right well everybody doesn't like something but nobody didn't like J Gypsy Ray that's true and uh, she had this uh, enormous quality which you've mentioned and I will insist on which is that her photographs her portraits are always 
they're never stolen. They are never taken in a, at a time of a person's bad moment. Sometimes you don't know how they were taken. How did that happen? That photograph where the woman, the, the man has the, 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 the client, the patient has his back to her and she is hugging him. And the light is pouring on the window down for them. And she's got this kind of satisfied or happier look on her face. How did, how did the photographer get into that private moment you know and that that of course remains a mystery how how she did that but it's that's but that's, that's also that's also where genius lies and that genius then transcribes and comes along and you can still see what's happening in those photographs i think i think that's my opinion. i think I, I think i fully agree with you it, you just described i think one of my favorite um my favorite image in the series of the selected works that we, we, we were able to put in this display, this online exhibition. And we, we start with that in the, in the show. And it's interesting because their eyes are closed and Gypsy is there in their presence. And it makes me wonder how the feeling in the room was in that photograph. It's, it's extremely intimate, it's extremely personal. And the trust that they had in her to allow that to be witnessed is quite phenomenal, really. Well, and, and, and remembering that the moment, the historic moment was not good. Mm. I mean, the society was saying, get out of here, go die, you know, go away. Mm. And, uh, uh, and Gypsy is saying, here is humanity, here is love, here is caring, all those, all those things. And that's, that's quite clearly in the photographs, I think. Now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> It was extremely emotional for our staff pulling these together and looking at the testimonies and getting the getting the piece ready for for show, you know, staff mentioned to me, this was extremely, it was a privilege in working with these photographs. And it was also exceptionally moving, looking and reading through people's private thoughts. Of course, they they were giving it to Gypsy to put, put to put out there. But it's 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 powerful stuff, really. And I, I suppose I've, I've mentioned, you know, you've touched on one of my favorite or the, the strong images that I, I like, but I'm wondering from, from you having seen the list of works selected, is there one that stands out for you now looking back um, that I don't want to say a favorite, but one that, that touches you particularly in that selection? Well, you know, when they say take one, I always take two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, you're offering, right? And, and that, that image of the woman holding the guy where you see mainly her, but then you see his back, and then and then uh, for me also the uh, the image of a guy sitting he's sitting with his caretaker, and they don't look he looks exhausted, um, and she looks tired out, um, and sometimes you you it's 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 not an easy photograph to interpret because it looks like it might be mother and son or something like that something like that, but. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know why I'm so in love with that one. At some level, it's kind of a pathetic photograph. But I thought that 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 somehow, you know, she's the strength in that photograph, and he's the weakness, and and he's he's the one going, and she's the one staying. And I had I had a number of students at that time who worked uh, as uh, caregivers uh, for people with AIDS, and amazing things happened in those relationships, uh, including a. I had had one student who who took care of a gay man who uh, he had her fold his shirts and put them in the drawer and if she didn't fold them right he would shake them out and uh, make her do it again and uh, there's a punchline to this story and she she did it and then he died and then they decided his friends decided that his panel in the AIDS quilt should have one of his shirts on it. Wow. She wrote in her diary. And I had the opportunity, now I am going to cry. I had the opportunity to fold that last shirt for him <laughs> the way he liked it, you know? Mm. Well, that's the kind of relationships that are being portrayed in these photographs. And I think in particularly in that one. Yeah, okay. Now you've done it. <laughs> it, it, it even, you know, it, to, to bring back such emotion, it's it's there. It's It's always just under the surface. You can feel... You know, I, I feel as it's um, it speaks through what she captured. She she left that that legacy there, um, and you know, uh, this 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 sense of I suppose 
it's a moment captured in time, what Gypsy has done. Even the, the, the nature of the color, the, the black and white nature with the touch of sepia running through it. And, and it's interesting, I think it's important to bear in mind maybe for today, for a contemporary sense of people uh, living with HIV or with AIDS, is that it's a completely different scenario now. Of course, people, it's not as scary. It's not a death sentence as it was, um, as represented in that period. And it's something that, that is important to say, I think, because you know, in the media, it, it, it can tend to be, to, to prolong, there can be, the stigma is still there, but it's important to say that people now live very long lasting, fulfilling lives and they have, they have you know, relationships and even to the extent with medicine today, that really it's undetectable. Um, it, it advances has been so dramatic in, in the space of 20 years. Well, that's true. That's all true, I think. Uh, and, and in a way it's hard to, it's, it's hard to reconstruct that time, uh, that dire time, and also that, that heroic time too. Uh, but it has, it has over and over again in the last 16 months, as you mentioned before, it has come up for me again that it's, you know, I mean, when you read about the exhaustion of the caregivers in the hospitals and the number of people who can't, you know, they're, they're called in for extra work and, and um, uh, we, we, we've been in a very, we've been in a very dire situation now, and I guess it's still not over, probably. Huh? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I suppose we can, we can, in a way, leave leave the last um, element to Gypsy. It's this, as I say, this is very much a contextual video that we wanted to do with the gallery to Carter have you involved because, as I say, you knew Gypsy intimately, did the introduction to this show, and. It was lovely to have you come and just have your take, your personal take on what it meant to have those works created and be associated with it. So I'd just like to thank you for doing that and um, to, to really rounding, giving a sense of a rounded sense of where this selection of images came from and, and what it meant to, to Gypsy and to you. It's, it's, it's a great privilege that you, you agreed to do this for us. Well, thank you, Anne. It's also nice to get to meet you too. <laughs> it is. And for and for people watching, do um do send us any emails or your feelings or thoughts that you have on 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 watching through the online exhibition um, info at butlergallery.ie. We'd love to, to 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 see what you think, to hear your feelings, your thoughts, your impressions of of that the work that Gypsy did. And, um, and anything else that, that, you, that comes to mind that, that touched you about the pieces. So thank you, Carter, and um, all the best. And we will be in touch, I'm sure, at another time. Good, take care, thank you, bye.